So the best answer here is going to be E, neuroenteric cysts. So let's look at some of the features that make choice E the best answer here. So there is a well-circumscribed paravertebral mass lesion. You can see that that's dark on T1, bright on T2, bright on T2. So look quite cystic. The classic neuroenteric cysts should not enhance, or they should only enhance very thin right at the margin, unless it's infected. And you should never see internal enhancing mass lesion, because if you see that, think of something that's more malignant. Also, you can see that there's no effect on the adjacent bone, so there's no osseous invasion, no abnormal enhancement on this post-contrast uh, T1 with image. There's no mirror edema. You may also appreciate that there's mild scalloping of the adjacent vertebral body, which tells us that this lesion has been there for a long, long time. So again, speaking to this slow-growing, non-aggressive feature of neuroenteric cysts. But probably the most important clue here is that there is an adjacent vertebral body anomaly. You can see this vertical midline cliff give you this butterfly vertebra. So with a combination of a benign appearing cystic lesion with adjacent vertebral body anomaly, this is a classic feature for neuroenteric cysts. Keep in mind though, neuroenteric cysts can have different signal, um, can have vari variable signal internally it all depends on what kind of internal cystic content there is. For example, if you have a high proteinaceous content, it may look bright on T1, sometimes can look a little bit dark on T2. So keep, please keep that in mind. The reason why the classic appearance of a neuroenteric cyst is a paraspinal uh, cystic mask with adjacent vertebral body anomaly may go something like this. So during the development, recall you have three germ cell layers. You have ectoderm, mesoderm, endoderm. Remember ectoderm is the one that forms future skin, as well as neuroectoderm that forms a future nerve tissue, CNS, neural tube, etc. The mesoderm is the one that forms the future skeleton, uh, future bones, muscles, including spinal column, and the endoderm forms the future gut. And you have a nodal core. So perhaps during the development, you have an adhesion between the ectoderm and the endoderm. So in other words, you have a communication between future skin and future gut. As that connection elongates, you can imagine that anywhere along this fistula, you can have cysts. Sometimes sometime you can have a cyst that's forming anterior to the vertebral body or paravertebral location in this uh, case, that's the most common location for neuroenteric cysts. But essentially, anywhere along the track, you can have development. So you can have neuroenteric cysts anterior to the vertebral body, inside of the spinal canal, posterior to the vertebral body or vertebral column, or even outside into skin. Uh, that become neuroenteric fistula, which is very, very rare. So that's the reason why neuroenteric cysts had this classic appearance of a paravertebral cyst with adjacent vertebral body anomaly. So what about other answers that do not work as well for, uh, for this case? For example, choice A, metastasis. I think we all agree that metastasis should look a lot more aggressive than this. You should show an enhancing lesion um, with perhaps invasion of the adjacent osseous structure, or at least enhancement in the surrounding tissue or edema. So metastasis is not the best, uh, best answer here. For choice B, spinal meningocele, I need to see a direct communication between thecal sac and the cystic lesion in order for me to call a meningocele. Otherwise, uh, it's not a classic appearance at all. For choice C, ganglioneuroma. Recall ganglioneuroma, uh, along with neuroblastoma or ganglioneuroblastoma, they are a primordial neural crust cells, a tumor that derive from the sympathetic chain. They tend to occur in pediatric patients. The ganglioneuroma is the most mature type among those three, and the typical age is somewhere between 10 and under. In this case, we have adult patient, so the age doesn't quite fit. 
usually for gangliogenuroma, they tend to uh, present with quite a large lesion by the time it's discovered. And the signal is usually much more heterogeneous. And I should show you one that enhances. Uh, not all gangliogenuroma enhances, some of them do not enhance, but usually they enhance to some degree. And in many cases, uh, a large minority of cases, you do have calcification associated with gangliogenuroma presented with a posterior mediastinal mass. This is an example of a gangliogenuroma in a five-year-old boy. And in his CT, you can see there's calcification and with a quite a large paraspinal lesion. For the choice schwannoma, as you know, schwannoma classically presents as a dumbbell shape that has a both intraspinal component with expansion of the neural foramen as well as the extra foramenal component. And again, on T1, they tend to enhance. And in this case, it's, this is too well circumscribed and the location is not typical for uh, schwannoma. So overall, neuroenteric cysts remain the best answer in this case. That's all for this case. Good luck on your exam. Thank you for your attention.